Right, so I'm just going to play a bit of oxygen not included before I head to bed this evening. Um, but I just decided to do some rough numbers on if it makes sense to have a battery storage if you don't have solar. Because a few people have asked me about that. Okay, so a few people have asked either in person or in various comments on the other videos about my solar setup if I think it makes sense to get battery storage if you don't have solar. So basically my interpretation of this is, is people are thinking about you know using an economy 7 or economy 4 tariff and doing kind of what I'm doing during the winter months and filling up the battery with that cheaper off-peak electricity which tends to be about a third of the price and then using that to kind of live off. So I have my own thoughts on whether I think this is a good idea or not, whether it's worthwhile, um, but I hadn't done the numbers. So I've done some rough numbers, which I will kind of share with you guys right now. Obviously, do your own research, do your own checks. It's all so going to be related to how much your usage is and the size of battery and everything. Um, but I'm going to base these calculations off some information that I have and I know to be relatively accurate. And I guess the other thing I will say is sometimes these things aren't always 100% about what makes sense financially. It's about you know, how it makes you feel and everything. So again, do your own numbers, do your own checks and uh, yeah, hope this information is a little bit helpful. So what I'm gonna do uh, for this is again stick with some information that I know to be relatively true and accurate right now uh, April 2019 when we're doing this video so we're going to look at the Tesla Powerwall 2 so that's a 14 kilowatt hour battery 13.5 kilowatts of it is actually usable and right now when you order one of those Tesla Powerwall 2s they now make you have the um, Tesla backup gateway which um, enables you to have your house isolated so you can be off grid so when there's a power cut you can run from the battery like a, a battery backup generator that has increased the cost by about 1500 pounds in the UK so I'm now saying that the the power to with the backup gateway after being installed and that everything is about 8,000 pounds so need to check because there may be some variance in those prices uh, but that's kind of roughly um, what I'm basing this off and then also going to look at um, electricity costs based on what I know to be relatively accurate from the Octopus Go Economy 4 tariff so this is the tariff I'm on uh, as mentioned in previous videos there'll be a link in the description as well if you're interested in moving to Octopus Energy there is a link where you and I will both get £50 credit if you move with my link um, and I've recently moved onto the Octopus Go tariff which is economy 4 and that means that basically the off peak between half past midnight and half past 4 is 5 pence and uh, the peak is about 14 pence including that so that's the, the kind of electricity cost rates I'm going to use and then what I did some additional checking on was what is the typical average um, house electricity consumption here in the UK. So my consumption is relatively high, I think, but that's because I work from home. And I've got all these systems on, so I don't think it was a very good kind of average to use. So based on the information I can find online, there's quite a lot of statistics. And the average household in the UK uses somewhere around 4,648 kilowatt hours per year. That works out to be about 12.73 or 74 kilowatt hours per day, which I think sounds about right actually, because I feel like I'm kind of using almost double what the, the average person would use. So that's the information we have. Um, so let's kind of talk about what those numbers would equate to and whether it would make sense to have something um, like the Tesla Powerwall 2 or perhaps something smaller and obviously you work out those costs as relevant. So 
Based on um, that average consumption of 4,648 kilowatt hours per year and a peak electricity cost of around 14 pence, which I think is relatively average based on most suppliers. Obviously things are going up a little bit here and there at the moment. Um, that would mean that your electricity costs would be around 652, 650 pounds and 72 pence per year. So that's how much um, you're currently paying in electricity. So then if you decide to buy, for example, a Tesla Powerwall 2, and you're gonna fill that up every evening. Um, so you're gonna have 14 kilowatts of electricity going in there, um, and you're gonna use pretty much all of it. So you're using about 13 kilowatts. So with a bit of losses, it's gonna be about right. So you're gonna fill that up every night on the Economy 4 tariff. In this example, which would be five pence uh, per kilowatt. So a third, pretty much a third of the cost of the peak costs your electricity would then cost you 232 pounds and 40 pence for the whole year. So that's a saving of 418 pounds and 32 pence. So obviously those savings are what you're gonna to use to pay back for that 8,000 pounds cost of the Tesla Powerwall 2. So I worked that out to be just over 19 years to pay that back. So quite a long time. And the other thing to keep in, uh, aware of there really is obviously the battery is going to degrade over time. So again, using the Tesla Powerwall 2 as an example, Tesla warranty that product for 10 years with unlimited cycles and at 10 years they say it should be about 80% efficient. So that's about, what was it, 9 kilowatts for example, it should be able to produce as opposed to the 13.5, something like that. So I don't know what those batteries are going to be like in 20 years time. I'm sure the batteries will still be doing something, um, but it will be severely degraded um, by that time. So personally, from a strictly financial perspective, I don't think it makes sense to buy, in this example, a Tesla Powerwall 2 to use the economy tariff to get cheap electricity to then run your house throughout the day for the whole year. I don't think it makes sense. Just an example, um, I tried to kind of add in uh, the situation where if you already had solar, so not including the price of solar, but if you had um, a solar array right now and you've been thinking about adding a battery, what, kind of, what does that mean in terms of making sense? So again, I looked at, um, I think it's pvoutput.org, um, loads of people share their statistics um, on that website about what their generation is. So this will vary depending on kind of where you are, how many panels and everything. But the average um, solar array size in this country tends to be around 3.6 kilowatt hours of electricity. And the reason for that is because under that, well, with that amount, you don't need to have a DNO or anything. So it's more typical. So if, um, you had that solar array, then you'd be generating around 3,736 kilowatt hours per year. So you wouldn't be um, fully um, supplying all your electricity needs uh, for your average house of 4648. You're gonna be about 912 kilowatt hours short, which you're, which you're gonna have to buy from the grid. But obviously if you decide to buy a battery, um, you know, a large majority of that electricity that is coming from the solar is going into a battery and then that 912 kilowatt hours over the whole year you're going to buy in the economy tariff. So what that means is that you're probably going to spend around £45.60 per year on electricity which means you've got um, a saving of 605 pounds and 12 pence per year based on those same equation we used earlier which means you're going to pay back that power wall in about 13 years so again outside of the life of um the warranty so i think it's more borderline there i think the advantage of having uh, 
any battery storage when you have a solar array is you are obviously putting all that surplus back into the grid. Obviously you're getting some money from the feeding tariff, which we haven't included in that equation here. Um, but I still think it can be borderline um, if you, you know, for the smaller solar system. But I still think it would make sense in that kind of mental, emotional capacity that you're not getting back to the grid. Everything you're generating, you're able to consume yourself. Um, and you know, a, a few more years over the warranty, I still think the battery's gonna last um, really well. So I hope that helps. Again, this isn't my equations for my system. This is just based on an average UK household and the typical average solar array. So if you think about battery, um, you know, do these numbers for yourself and then decide, does it make financial sense? Or is it just something you wanna go with because you think it's the right smart thing to do? Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.